Welcome back. We're here to talk to you about uh, e-commerce campaigns. More specifically, we want to talk to you about the only search campaign that can beat a smart shopping campaign. Yeah, it's uh, it's probably the only one I've ever seen beat smart shopping. And actually, the majority of the time, they beat shopping campaigns. That's um, have we done it? Have we done a video on smart shopping? Hmm. We've done a video on how we did a video on when to start a smart shopping campaign, but we should probably do a video dedicated to smart shopping. That would be beneficial. We should. Um, yeah. So we'll okay. do that soon. So stay tuned and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that subscribe bell button so that you get notified when we have a new video coming out because that's going to be one that you're going to want to see. That was well done. I'm getting good at this now. Yeah. I watch a lot of people on YouTube. Uh, I don't work. I just watch YouTube videos all day. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, this is a campaign that most people are afraid to start. And partially because it's a little bit difficult to start on its own. There's a lot of moving parts and um, you know, there's a lot of vagueness that are just kind of unique to just Google ads and just this portion of, uh, of the area. So meaning that, you know, when you're like, what's a dynamic ad target? What's a negative dynamic ad target? That's not like a keyword. Can I bid on a keyword? Nope, there's no keyword. You can't bid on keywords. So everything's just kind of turned upside down, but it's, it's highly beneficial and that's called dynamic search ads. Dynamic search ads can beat smart shopping campaigns, which is without a doubt the most high performing e-commerce campaigns you can run. And let me share my screen so I can share with you some, some results here. So this is just last seven days for clients that we have, um, we have four campaigns running dynamic search ads, smart shopping, branded and dynamic marketing. Dynamic marketing is a, uh, you know, you just want to run this so that smart shopping can help fire the conversion tag and know where to remarket to a person. But the dynamic search ads you can see here, we're running dynamic search ads at $45 a day, smart shopping $40. We're using target return on ad spend uh, as a bit strategy here. Smart shopping uses a uh, maximized conversion value. You can see that the click the rate, or sorry, the clicks 174 versus 418. So it's a lot more, it's a lot lower in clicks. Cost per click's almost three times as high. The conversions are 13 and 18. So they're kind of competing fairly close. Conversion value 1328. Conversion value of smart shopping, 1304. Whoa. So 524% return on ad spend, 573 return on ad spend. Now they're just, I mean, it's not yet beating it, but it is the only campaign that can, but it's just- Well, I was just not, gonna say that. I've never seen anything even get that close. So the fact that it's as close as it is, is really impressive. Yeah, and, and we're running a brand campaign here, which is always crushing it. But um, dynamic search ads, when you're running it on e-commerce, we have a few clients that are running dynamic search ads on e-commerce works really well. Um, and the cool part about this is, this is why it's not really that known, why a lot, I don't see a lot of clients. I, do, I actually can't remember a client we've taken on in the last two years that was running a dynamic search ad. I've never inherited a client like that. So I think that is probably perfectly time to do a video here because this is something that um, you know is, is probably shedding one of the first actual case studies I've ever seen on dynamic search ads to, to light. So what dynamic search ads do, what's that? Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, I said something. I'm hearing things. The voices in my head are louder today. It's weird. Um, so what dynamic search ads do is you actually get to pick what they call targets on your site. And what a target is, is essentially just a, um, a landing page or even a category. And uh, when I go to dynamic ad targets here, you can see that there might be a few of these things blurred out just because we have brand names in the titles of the, um, in titles of the URLs. So if you, if you see some blurred out, that's just proprietary. But in the dynamic ad targets, what you tell Google to do is say, scan all my web pages. And as you scan all my web pages, find keywords and phrases that people are searching for today and build me an, uh, an ad, build me a headline and, and put it on the top half of the first page of Google. And when someone searches a keyword that matches that page, build that ad and give it to them. And it's, it's like counterintuitive to everything you know in Google Ads. Like the ad headline is just dynamically generated from your website content. The web page that you're going to is dynamically generated to whatever page is gonna send it to you. Uh, the only thing you really have control over is description. And we'll go through that in a moment. But what you basically say is give me an instantaneous SEO. And the cool part about that is what SEO is, is Google's ability to match what your words and phrases on your site say, based on what people are searching and say, hey, you two should meet. This is just pay to play version of that. Instantaneous SEO is the best way I can describe this. And the reason why these campaigns perform really well, especially in e-commerce, is if you're selling jeans, for example, 
and your jeans are dark blue jeans. They're straight legged, they're relaxed fit, and all of the descriptions about the jeans on your site. And someone says dark blue jeans that are relaxed fit. It's like, hey, that, that this company here actually has exactly what you're looking for. You two should meet. And the cost per click is, you know, on average about dollar ish, which is good. But what's cool about this is you don't have control over where you want to point these targets. So this is a company that sells different types of salts, um, salts for eating, salts for bathing, a bunch of different salts. And the cool part about it is we can tell Google when the category on my website equals scented bath salts, um, take into consideration all of those keywords that people type in that closely match all my descriptions and simply send them right to the right page where they need to go buy something. Um, and when you look at keywords here, for example, you don't have any enabled keywords. You don't actually bid on keywords. Um, the keywords are simply just whatever is matched onto your site. Well, and what we get- I you there because it, it begs the question, uh, what happens when I have poor content quality? Because if, if you have somebody who hasn't done what they need to do in order to build out a robust site, they're gonna have horrible performance. So this is gonna rest on a really robust site with really robust content quality. Yeah, one of the things that we do here at Solutions Aid is before we run a dynamic ad ca uh, campaign is we make sure that there's enough headlines, descriptions, and supportive content on each page individually to make sure that you can get a good match. Because if you have a picture of something and then a price and then a buy now and like a two like line description, Google's gonna say not enough matches. It's like, we can't, we don't know what you're selling here. We can't figure out exactly what people are searching for. We just can't match this. Well, so, and as, as catastrophically uh, damaging could be content that's irrelevant. You know, I've got a, a, a lot of clients that I can think of where they're building content for the avatar, not necessarily for the product or service. We do that. You know, we've got blogs on SEO. We don't offer SEO services, front facing anyway. Um, yeah. And so we could end up with SEO clients coming in or, or leads being driven for SEO. So how do we, how do we mitigate that and I see that you have a solution. Yeah, but we don't have we don't have that issue with this client since it's heavily e-commerce and are very honest and truthful, which is like the number one thing you need to have on your site is honest, so truthful. Not honest and truthful. No, we're not honest and truthful at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for for the e-commerce though, it's like if they say this is you know a bath salt and it will cure your dog's bad breath. Well, when people Google how to cure my dog's bad breath, they're going to go see your salt. So it's just not true. So being honest and truthful is is a big issue. But to, to, we actually had a issue where, um, I, I use that dog analogy because there was a case study on a client site that they showed how this specific tool of automation helped a dog grooming business go from X to Y in, in revenue. And people were, we were showing up in dynamic search ads as to um, how to increase like my dog grooming business. And they're a tech <laughs> company. And we're like, where is this coming from? It took a little time to dig through their site. We found it from like a blog from like two years ago or three years ago, I think it was 2017. And we ended up excluding that. So you do have control. And there's two areas that you want to look at when you have control. The di negative dynamic ad targets, you'll want to create these if there's irrelevancy on your site. If you have a blog topic that is very wide ranging and talks about a whole different array of things, exclude those as targets. Say, don't, don't, don't scan my blogs in match terms because then we're going to have irrelevancy. But you can actually say, I want my homepage, my contact page, my product pages, and maybe my about page and freelance collections page, and that's it. Don't do my blog, don't do my you know, wins of the week, whatever it may be, some just ancillary information. Target where you know you want to have people show up at. Um, and that's going to be like kind of the rule number one. Um, and what's cool about this is when you look at search terms, um, there's going to be, uh, oops, sorry, this is landing page here. Hold on one second. That was all going to be blurred out, by the way, because that's going to be on the client's site. Um, but if you go to search terms here, for example, you'll see some some keywords here that we don't want to share. They're, they are proprietary. Um, but you'll see the keywords are 40 pounds dead sea salt. And that's what a person typed into Google. Um, and what's cool about this is 40 pounds dead sea salt. That's probably not a, a normal keyword you just think off the top of your mind. Like, I wonder if anybody's searching for 40 pounds of this stuff. But since it is on the site and they have... 10 pounds each, Google can know how, how to match this. So there was, you know, two clicks and it cost it's us a dollar. For what impression? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so funny because they searched once and clicked on the ad twice. It's like, what? Oh, I know it could have been 64 cents, but it cost us a dollar 28, but then we made $247. So we're okay with that. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, it's all right. Um, so that's what's kind of cool though, is you get to see, is there good search terms popping up like how is your site content if you see like this has nothing to do with me at all then you got to revise your site content but if it looks pretty relevant and you're getting sales 
odds are you're you're having good good relevancy from the page being matched up to what people are searching for. Someday DSA is going to put us out of a job. You're just going to be able to say Google, here's my site, plug it into Google Ads, and they're going to advertise everything for you, including writing the ad copy, and you're not going to need us. Yeah, exactly. Like right now, we're like we can write descriptions. Uh, the cool part about this though is when it says, "Okay, would you like to use a product feed?" Yes, you do. You got to develop the feed, put it on your website, make sure it's in the root domain so that it, Google can find it. And then you will uh, most likely um, want to do that. And then to make sure your feed's optimized. Uh, so hopefully they still need us, uh, you know, for a while. But yeah, it's uh, when it's up and running, it just it works really, really, really well. Um, there is some feed options. You got to you got to make the targeting settings. You want to run manual first. Um, you want to add negative keywords. You want to then list a target CPA. Then you want to set a realized goal. Then you want to start to slowly scale. So there's some good best practices that you want to follow in running this thing. You have to say like, oh, scan my site and I win. Um, but it is, it is really good stuff. Uh, and that's what's cool. We have a few clients that um, dynamic search ads is like right there, right underneath smart shopping. But what's great about this is we can just double the efficiency of a, of a campaign. And when you're spending, you know, $571 in the last week and make 3,800, if you're only running smart shopping, you make 1,300 and you'd spend 2.7, still really good. But this is a way to just kind of like tack on that additional awesomeness that really starts to scale these, these campaigns or these kind of, you know, secret campaigns. Yeah, well, and DSA makes so much sense for e-commerce sites because they already have robust content. The content's older specific to the product. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny, you know, like we use DSA for local campaigns. We use them, we have a, a, an agency that services Montessori schools, and we've seen a lot of success with Montessori schools because they have really robust content. But, but e-com's nice because the, the connection is so granular. You know, yeah. it's not just like categorical. It's like, oh, I need this very specific product. Yeah, uh, and people are looking for like all the different variations. Like if they're typing in a description about the product that matches a description about your product, it's like you two should meet. I mean, it's just so organic. Um, and that's, and that's why SEO works so well for so long is because it was really organic connection, but now it takes 30 grand and eight months just to get ranked to top half of the first page when right now you just pay a dollar, um, and get right there. So I mean, it's perfect. I love it. But, uh, yeah, this is the only campaign that I've seen have gotten close and very few instances beat, but usually it's like right in close second place to smart shopping. So I thought that'd be, it'd be interesting to share this. It was great. And if you're watching, you have questions, hit the comments, we'll answer it. And it's actually us answering, by the way. We don't have like a VA managing this. Like you're going to get real smartness on those comments. Yeah. But otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. What was that thing you said? Hit the bell? Hit the bell? Yeah, if you hit the notification bell, people's yeah, like right phones, away. yeah, phones will go off. And so okay. I'll make sure to, to, to upload at like 3 a.m. So I know you're not doing anything else and you're definitely not asleep. Uh, otherwise, we're doing this every day. So uh, tune in and we'll see you all next time. Sounds good. Thanks.